Good afternoon, YouTube. Um, I actually had the day off today, so I thought I would take some time and address some of the things that have been going on for the last week and a half. First, I just want to give a really big um, shout out to the Warwick protest. I watched it and I was really busy that weekend, but I made sure that I, I took time to give encouragement to all of the people that were brave enough to go down there. Um, there's a lot of us that are in the community, but for one reason or another, we are precluded from actually going out and doing things like that. Um, I have a heavy, heavy workload, but I also have a high profile position. Um, and without getting into it too much, I, I literally could not go out. Um, I wish that I could, um, and I try to help as much as I can, but I just think it's very important that we keep up the pressure and we keep talking about all of the things that this organization is guilty of. Um, I was so proud of the protests in the Kingdom Halls. And, and I know a lot of people um, that are detractors or negative people say, well, what was the purpose of that? Well, I definitely believe that if you look at people like Gandhi and you look at people like uh, Martin Luther King, if you look at people who believed in silent protests, you'll actually see that it, it, it really does something. I'm a firm believer in the butterfly effect. Um, for those of you that are new to my um, videos, I'm actually a philosopher among many other things. I'm actually well studied and have, have studied a lot of different um, beliefs. And it's really interesting because they all follow a same a basic philosophy when you really examine it up close. So one of the things um, that is very important is for us to remember that one small change in the universe um, can change everything. And the more that we are fearless and the more that we speak out, the more that we cause this organization to look at what it's doing. I personally love that people are waking up. They cannot ignore apostates. They can't label us as apostates and think that we're going to go away. We're not bad people. There's nothing wrong with advocating for victims of child abuse and sexual abuse. And I'm one of those people. Um, it's not something that I've actually talked about too much, but my grandfather sexually molested me when I was young. And I repressed that memory for a long time and it was very difficult for me to talk about it. My stepfather also was inappropriate with me and he was a Jehovah Witness, but no one believed me um, when I talked about my stepfather because no one else was there and I was told to let it go and to just move on. Um, and my mother was raped by my grandfather repeatedly and he was the presiding overseer. And one of the reasons that this went on without any, any, anything ever happening to my grandfather is because of the two witness rule. My grandmother never did anything. So I wanna talk about, and he didn't just rape my mother, he raped my aunts. And it literally has destroyed my family in a lot of ways. So um, after following the Warwick protest and feeling really good about it, you know, I saw the governing body had doubled down and, and had, uh, you know, had something on their JW.org and literally said, we're going to hold on to the two witness rule. I was flabbergasted. I was incensed. And I have the day off today, so I actually had some time to talk about how incensed I am and what it is that I really want to say about all of this. I think it's disgusting and I think it's horrible. And it's something that 
I want people to know how deep the child abuse goes in the Jehovah Witness religion. And it is really something that we all have to come together and fight against because too many children have been violated. Too many people have been hurt. Too many people have had their families broken up over this ridiculous two witness rule. So let me just start with a little bit of a narrative on my own personal journey. Um, when I was young and I used to go to the Kingdom Hall um, and I was forced to go from the time I was born, but um, I remember hearing about the Catholic, Catholic Church all the time. And anyone that's been involved in the Kingdom Hall that's gone to meetings on a regular basis, they know that the Catholic Church um, is a is a easy target and it's a it's a well used target and it's something that the Jehovah Witnesses always use. If you look at some of the videos that have been um, sent out and that's on YouTube and you see people that will go up to these. Uh, these people that are out selling magazines, they're, they're unpaid free labor. Part of the membership in the Jehovah Witness religion is that you do have to sell their publications and they are unpaid workers. But when you go up to these people and you say, what, what, do, you, what do you think about the sexual abuse scandals in the Jehovah Witness religion? And they will say, Oh no, that's the Catholic Church. So I, I honestly think, and this is another problem I have, is that they're literally lying to their members and they're literally hiding a lot of things that have gone on in the congregations, things that have happened to the members. I don't honestly, in one way, I think that they are hiding that there have been so many people that have been harmed and, and abused in the Jehovah Witness religion. It's not a small number. It's not 20, 30 people. There are thousands and thousands of cases. And here's the other issue. This is court record. They were ordered by the courts to turn over information in their databases, every congregation has a secret database record of child abuse cases, and they refuse to turn them over to the courts. And that is a problem because they are not advocates for children. And that is what people in these congregations need to understand. And I'm gonna hit on this in a few different ways, but I just wanna start there. So everyone in the Jehovah Witness religion hears about the predatory behavior of the people in the Catholic Church. Why this is an indication that this is a false religion because there's so many scandals, but no one wants to talk about the scandals in the Jehovah Witness religion. But I want to talk about it. First of all, let's talk about the Royal Commission in Australia in 2015. I want people, if you're a Jehovah Witness and you're listening to this, please look up the Child Abuse Royal Commission of Australia in 2015. Okay, their findings, and there was, member, there was a member of the governing body that was forced to testify there. And I think people are gonna be really, really surprised at the things that they had to admit under oath. They were found to be deficient. They let repentant child abusers return to church. They, um, there was a massive child abuse cover up. They admitted to having over a thousand in Australia alone of records of child abuse that they never turned over to the authorities. And if you are a reasonable person, if you are someone that is compassionate, you have to ask the question, why are people in the Jehovah Witness religion refusing to turn over information when it is about a crime, a crime that could be potentially committed against a child because they don't care about children. 
They don't care about children. If they cared about children, the moment that someone turned to them and said and confided in them because they're they're telling their members to go and trust them more than the quote unquote world, why would they not take it to the proper authorities? Because here's the point, members of the congregation, including the elders are not qualified to evaluate child abuse and sexual abuse cases. Those should go to the, the appropriate people it is not people in the kingdom hall. And I'm going to get on, get to that in a minute. So for people that think, oh, these apostates are making it up. I challenge you. I challenge you to look at some of these settlements. Look at the Fessler settlement of 2017. Look at the Candace Cotton settlement. I want you to look up the Zalkin, Z-A-L-K-I-N law firm. There were five cases that were settled out of court. I want you to look at 20, 2007, and I want you to look at the attorney Kim Norris Law Firm. There were 16 child abuse cases that they took a class action suit against, and there was a settlement of over $16 million. Again, this is all record that people can find out for themselves. What I want to talk about a little bit is the Gonzalo Campo sexual abuse of 2014. This is very relevant. You can look this up. Gonzalo Campos. His name is G-O-N-Z-A-L-O. -O, last name C-O-M-P-A-S. When he was six years old, he went to his mother and told him that there was someone in the congregation that was molesting him. His mother told the brothers and nothing was done because of the two witness rule. They made him, so there's been an accusation. The brothers don't go to don't go to the authorities. They're saying, oh, well, we in our religion have decided that there's not two witnesses, so we're not going to go to the authorities with it. This man becomes a ministerial servant. He becomes an elder. Okay, there's, there's been a six-year-old child that has already talked about the fact that this man has molested him. He was disfellowshipped. I'm, I'm, I don't know what it was about. But he was reinstated. And I've talked about this in other videos. The whole disfellowshipping and reinstatement for issues such as this is another problem because your congregation is still dirty. These types of people should not be allowed to come back into the congregations and have any type of associations with the members. And especially if they have children and they should warn the members, there were members in this church that had no idea. They had no idea that there was someone in their congregation that had been accused of sexual molestation. And guess what happened? Once he was reinstated, he went on to molest six more people. And this is not apostate lies. This is actual truth. But this is where it gets really, really disgusting. Okay, the courts award, awarded this, this, this young man millions of dollars. Um, and the congregation wanted to appeal it. They didn't want them to win, but they also wanted them to turn over the records. They refused. They appealed it. And um, the appeals court said, okay, well, we're, we're going to reduce the amount. But what we really want to do is we want you to turn over the names of the people. We want you to, you know, to give the, the names of all these people from all over your congregations. The Watchtower and Track Society refused. And excuse me, here's what the courts did. The court said for every day that you don't turn this over, we're going to fine you um, thousands of dollars. And you know what the congregation did? The, the Watchtower and Bible Tract Society did? They are still refusing to turn over these records. They're refusing to turn over records of child abuse cases. 
and sexual abuse cases in the Kingdom Hall. I'm asking people to think about this from a humanistic point of view. How can you say that this organization is right? How can you say this is of God when they are not advocating for victims of sexual and child abuse? This is an example of why the two witness rule does not work. It doesn't work because even if you go to the elders, if you go to an overseer and you tell an overseer what happened, they will interrogate a child. But if there's no other witnesses, nothing is done. And this person is never brought to justice. People say, I have people, how is it that your grandfather raped and molested your mother and your aunts and molested you and nothing ever happened? Because my grandmother would never do anything because she knew about the two witness rule. And this is what I'm talking about. The effects of this abuse did not go away. My mother had mental breakdowns because she was abused. She was beat. She was abused by my grandfather. She was beat by my father. He was disfellowship, reinstated, disfellowship, reinstated, disfellowship, reinstated. Again, it's a cycle. But the, the these people still go back into the congregation. And it was good. My grand, my father, he he's now an elder, and you know, in some congregation in Georgia, he moved and was able to go there and start over. And so that's what a lot of these people do that abuse that are sexual predators. They get this fellowship, they get reinstated, they move to another area, they rebrand themselves and nobody in the congregation knows anything about it. And, and here's the problem that I really want to hit on about why this two witness rule destroys families. This is what I want people to understand. It's not just the fact that if you even talk about the sexual abuse, that you are, if you don't have another witness, if the person doesn't confess, right, then they just ignore it. So now you have to go to the Kingdom Hall and you have to interact with this person. If you do anything that is for protection of your children or yourself, you can be sanctioned and you can be disfellowship. If you watch some of the protests in the Kingdom Hall, you will see people that this has actually happened to. They have been disfellowship. Women and children are not protected in this environment. And if anyone wants to challenge me, feel free. I have, I have an arsenal of legit documented cases. Everything that I talked about is things that you can look up on your own. This is not people that are making things up. I would have, I would never have anything to do with an organization like this because they allow sexual predator, predators to be members of the Kingdom Hall. And, and that is wrong. So getting back to what I'm talking about, if you talk to women, if you talk to men, if you talk to family members in the Jehovah Witness religion, and I have, and they know about something that has happened to their child, and they know that there's not another witness, they are scared. I've known people, I've talked to people who have moved from other congregations because they knew that if they went to the brothers, that they would be interrogated and there was no one else that would confess to anything. So it's not just the fact that they go around and double down on the two witness rule. And trust me, they are indoctrinating and they are saying it to their members. Don't even think about coming to the congregation. Don't go to the elders unless you have two witnesses. And here's the biggest point of that. That is not law. That is not the law of the land. So besides the fact that it's a violation of the law, you have to protect yourself. You have to protect your children. Women, you have to protect yourself because you're not protected in this organization. They do not think about the children. They think about themselves, 
they think about their organization. These people are out of control. And every time they go and they make statements that it must be the two witness rule, they are forcing these people to go into hiding and to not talk about the sexual abuse that they're feeling because they're not going to be validated and they're not going to be supported in their organization. And that is one of the reasons that I'm making this video today. Do not let these do not let that pe do not let those people in, in in Warwick. Do not let those members of the governing body fear you into thinking that you need to listen to them. If you feel that your child has been sexually assaulted, molested, or abused, go to the police. Do not listen to these people. They do not care about your best interests. There are too many children, including me, that was molested and raped my mother, my aunts. And nothing was ever done because my grandmother knew that if she went to them and and one of my aunts would not go because she was afraid and she didn't want to, she didn't want to talk about it. See, that's the thing. Sometimes you have people that are so horrified because their parent has done something to them that they're scared to talk about it. They might confess it, but they don't want to tell anybody else. You don't know what that parent is trying to do. So they're telling them that you, you, you know, you don't have any choice. You just have to accept it. This is how this, this practice has broken up families. And this Campos um, family, this, this Campos story, Gonzala, they just lost Jehovah Witness, I think it was two days ago or yesterday that they actually dropped it on, on the Watchtower and Track Society and said, you must turn over you must turn over these records. So I'm telling you, the courts are not, they're not holding back anymore. Every time we protest, every time we stand up for the rights of these children and these sexual abuse victims, we are forcing this organization to wake up. You will not get away with this. And I'm speaking to every Jehovah Witness that has the guts to listen to what I'm saying. Listen to me. Listen to me. These elders, these ministerial servants are not educated people. They are not educated. They do not have any training when it comes to dealing with sexual and child abuse. Most of these people have barely graduated high school. They have no college training. When your child is sexually abused, when you even think that it's something, you go to a therapist, you take your child and you go and you file charges against anyone that you think has mistreated your child. Your first defense is to make sure that your child is protected. There, there is no reason that any person that is a part of an organization that feels like their children are not protected should feel forced to go to that meetings or anything like that. I'm not telling you what to believe, but please think about the children. Look at these examples. It should it should be mind boggling to any member that there is records, it's database records in the tens of thousands that the Jehovah Witness religion refuses to turn over to the authorities. And all you got to do is look it up. They're pay, they rather pay a fine they rather pay a fine than, than to turn over the records of all the people that have been victimized by elders and ministerial servants and rank and file members because they want to protect themselves. How many millions of dollars have they had to pay out? And we're the bad people. I've never molested anybody. What is the point here? What is the point of the two witness rule? What does the law say? What does the law of the land say? Do you need two witnesses in order for someone to be convicted? You can be convicted on DNA evidence. A lot of times there are crimes that are committed and there are no witnesses. My point is that that doesn't mean that a crime didn't occur. 
My point is that just because there are not two witnesses to something doesn't mean that there legitimately hasn't been a crime committed. That doesn't mean that sexual abuse didn't occur or child abuse didn't occur. Because they're doubling down on this, they are actually convincing people that if it's not two witnesses, it didn't happen. Actually, it could have happened. And the fact of the matter is, is that there are court cases where they have had to settle for millions of dollars and have been charged and they have been convicted and had to serve and give money to the members that were harmed because of their practices. This is, this is, this is true. What does the law of the land say? You can be convicted without two witnesses. So stop telling your members that they don't have rights and that their children don't have rights. They don't even tell their members that they have to, they need to report that to the police. And look, and look at these examples that I talked about. These people were still going to the Kingdom Hall because they never alerted their members to the fact that there was a child abuse abuser that had gotten reinstated and was in the kingdom hall he went on to molest six more children and how how often do you think this happens because it happened i knew about it this is one of the reasons i stopped going because i found out that there was a sexual predator in my grandparents congregation that had been sexually abusing someone he had been reinstated and they still would not tell the members this is going to blow up in this society's face because now that they've doubled down on it i want people to know how sinister and how sick and how narcissistic that this group is those men are completely dis detached from the well-being of the members of their society. If they were really caring about the victims of these crimes, they would be advocating that these people be persecuted to the fullest extent and they would be expelled. Unlike in the Catholic Church, when they, they will expel you, you will not be allowed to have a membership in their religious order once you have sexually abused a child. These people are not educated. They are not experienced enough. They are not qualified enough. You have people that have gone on to move around and to have ranking, have had leadership roles, and they have abused other members of congregations. This organization has to be stopped. No matter how busy I was today, I had to take time and I had to talk about this. People need to wake up. If you think, if you know that something has happened to your child, do not listen to these members in the kingdom hall don't listen to the elders don't listen to the governing body do you even know how these people were actually made you're not being told the truth how were they even made to be governing body members these people are not educated they're not qualified okay they've had to change the 1914 doctrine i mean how many things need to happen before people wake up but my point is that you have to think about your children. Your children are not protected in these kingdom halls. They are letting child abusers run rampant. And it is huge. There is a database record in every kingdom hall of sexual abuse and child abuse cases that they will not turn over to the authorities. So I am speaking from the bottom of my heart. Please think about the children. Please protect your children. Please understand that I was a victim. My mother was a victim. My aunts were victims. But we don't have to be victimized. We can advocate for ourselves. And I want people to know that we support you. There is a whole community out here and we're not going to stop. This is just the beginning. Be blessed, stay strong, 
And always remember you are not alone. The moment that you wake up, the moment that you empower yourself, you have changed the course of your life. Thank you.